I've been wanting to do this video for a while where I show you the good, the bad, and the ugly bugs in the garden. Now, I like to organic garden, and two years ago, I would spray a lot of different things that were organic. I felt like even though I was spraying on a regular schedule, I was still getting overrun by pests. So I decided I'm gonna stop this. Last year was the first year that I sprayed nothing in my garden but water. I started to notice something, more of a balance of the ecosystem in my garden, where I was seeing more and more beneficial insects and birds. See that cardinal? See how they perch? They go throughout the garden and they perch on the cattle panels. And I notice how they, their cute little heads move about and they spot pests and they dive bomb and they grab them and eat them. It's so fun to see. And I've been seeing this more and more. And I started learning a lot and doing a lot of research on the different bugs in my garden, learning the good from the bad so that I know which ones to remove and which ones not to remove, along with the eggs, the larvae, and the nymphs. Throughout these different phases that they go through, they change. This year, more than anything, I've been seeing good bugs in my garden and not so many pests. Now I choose to squish the pests in my garden. That might gross a lot of people out, I understand that. I used to take a bowl out to the garden with some soapy water and dip them in that instead. But I'm out here so much and I just find that I don't have a bowl and it's just been easier to just squish them as I go. Every day I come out here, morning and evening at this point, and I check everything. I go throughout my garden and do a little walk through and I look for pests. As I've done this, I've gotten a lot better at spotting them. Even tiny little eggs that you would think that you would never see. But let's start with the notorious horned worm. Now there are two horned worms that you need to worry about. There's the tomato hornworm and there's the tobacco hornworm. The best way I've been able to tell them apart is that the tobacco hornworm has a red horn and he kind of has more of a brightish green color to his shape. The tomato hornworm has a bluish colored horn, and I feel like his body has a little bit more of a bluish hint to it. Not that it really matters. If you're seeing a horned worm on your plants, on your tomatoes, tobacco, eggplants, they generally like nightshades, but not always. They love borage, and borage has been a great trap crop for me this year. I'm gonna be planting a lot more of it next year, and planting it right next to your tomato, I've found that the horned worms prefer it over your tomato plant. Now both tobacco horned worms and tomato horned worms have the same diet. One horned worm that I know some people get confused with is the hummingbird horned caterpillar. Now that is one that when it hatches, it turns into this beautiful hummingbird moth. And they do not have the same diet as the tobacco and tomato horned worm does. So you're not gonna be seeing them in your garden unless they're in moth form and <coughs> pollinating things. Cause that's what they do is they're pollinators. The tomato and tobacco horned worms have completely different moths and they generally come out at night. It's best to find these horned worms in egg form because once they hatch, they start doing damage very quickly. Don't mind my roosters, they like to talk a lot. Now, when I first looked up to see what a horned worm egg was, I thought there's no way. There's no way I'm gonna be able to find this on my plant. For one, they're green, they blend in, they're very tiny. I found the more I was out here every day, I was spotting them, I could see them. And now when I go through, I can see them and even from a distance, I'm like, oh, there's one and I pick it off and get rid of it. These moths will lay their eggs at night and they only lay one at a time on a leaf or plant. You're not gonna see them in a cluster. And sometimes you will see them on the leaf, sometimes you will see them on the stem of the plant or even the trellis. So trellises, stems, are also places where pests will lay their eggs. So don't just look on the leaf or even on the underside of the leaf. Once these little guys hatch, they are very, very tiny, but they do a lot of damage. The way I can tell if there is one, you can always see damage on the leaf. And then underneath the leaf, you will see droppings. And if you lift that leaf up, there's your hornworm and you can get rid of it and remove it. They grow very quickly and they get very large and can do a lot of damage in a short amount of time. This year I haven't had any hornworms get that large. I've caught them all in egg or very tiny when they first hatch. But I'll be honest with you, when they are large, they 
are very strong and they will hang on to that plant for dear life and it freaks me out. <laughs> so I was getting brave enough to pick them off with just my hands because I know they don't bite. But using tweezers is always a good idea. While I was talking to y'all about that hornworm, I spotted a beautiful pink ladybug. And I came back here to show it to you and, well, she's gone. So it's a good thing I got footage of them earlier. So these little pink little ladybugs are super cute for one. Last year I saw a couple. This year I'm seeing them all over and I've even been seeing them mating, which is great. We wanna see that. We wanna see our beneficial insects procreating. <laughs> These little guys, their diet is the same as your regular little red ladybug, and their eggs look similar. They lay them in a cluster. They're an orange-yellow color, kind of cone-shaped. When they hatch, y'all, I'm telling you what, they look nothing like a ladybug. The first time I saw a ladybug larva in my garden, I got rid of it. It was really creepy and ugly looking, and I thought for sure this thing is bad, but they're not. So look out for them. The first time you see them, you might be like, what the heck is that? You want to leave them. They're beneficial. One of my biggest pests in my garden has been the lady squash beetle. The first time I spotted these little guys a few years ago on my squash, I thought they were beneficial. I wasn't sure what they were. I just thought they were a normal ladybug, but orange. <laughs> they are the bad guys. And so I just let them be and they ended up laying tons of eggs and they overran my garden and I felt very overwhelmed and it made me not want to go out there. When I first started researching the lady squash beetle and the beneficial ladybug eggs, I was concerned that they looked quite a bit alike and I wasn't sure if I'd be able to tell them apart in the garden until a few days ago. I saw my first set of beneficial ladybug eggs. They are the same color as the lady squash beetle eggs, but they're different. The lady squash beetle eggs are larger, and when you touch them, they're wet and very soft, and you can easily squish them between a leaf. They're also a little bit more pointy on the ends. The beneficial ladybugs are smaller, and if you were to touch them, they are hard, and they would come off in a cluster. They also have a little bit of a sheen to them, and the top of the egg is a little bit more rounded compared to the lady squash beetle. Now when they hatch, their larvae are an oval shape and they look like they have little spikes on them. They don't. They are not spikes, they're not pointy, in fact they're very squishy. <laughs> you can easily squish them or remove them and put them in a bowl of soapy water. But you want to remove them because they will ruin your squash. This little guy, I don't remember his name. What is your name? In fact, their shape is similar to that of the pink ladybug. But they're not good, gotta get rid of them. There's all different kinds of stink bugs. Now, one that's beneficial, and one that I've been seeing a lot of in my garden this year and last year, but especially this year, is the spined stink bug. They look like they have these little spines on their shoulders. They will eat the larva, the eggs, and the pest itself. So you're going to want these little dudes in your garden. They are your helpers. Their eggs are very different than any other egg that you will see. So easy to spot. They're in a cluster and they're round, but they have these little spikes on the top of them. And when the nymphs hatch, they look like these tiny, tiny little beetles. They're kind of a reddish color. And they look different as they grow. It's hard to describe, so I'm just going to show you in picture. They look a lot different than what they end up maturing into. And when I saw my first one in the garden, I thought that it was a bad guy and I got rid of it. This next one I'm going to talk about is one that you might have heard about before, is the marmorated stink bug. I used to see these guys a lot last year in my garden. I haven't seen any of them this year. I used to get them confused with the beneficial stink bugs. They are bigger than the beneficial stink bugs that I have in my garden. They also don't have any armor. Their eggs are white and they lay them in a cluster. And when the nymphs hatch, they look like tiny little beetles. And the nymphs do look similar to the spined stink bug nymphs. The marmorated stink bug nymphs Hi. are more orange and the beneficial ones have more of a red color to them. In fact, last year, it was my first year that I saw some of the marmorated stink bug nymphs. And it was neat to see them 
in person because before that I had just seen them in pictures and it's just you learn a lot more if you can see it in real life. One of the bad bugs that you'll find on your squash is called the Anacetristus, and I hope that I'm saying that correctly. I used to think these guys were stink bugs too, but they're not. They are longer than the marmorated stink bug, and they also don't stink if you squish them. Their eggs are coppery colored in kind of a diamond shape. In fact, I saw one in action a few days ago, laying eggs on my Odessa squash over here. And in this situation, I went ahead and just removed the leaf and threw it to the chickens. The guy needs to stay. When the nymphs hatch, they are kind of a gray color. Another one of the good guys in your garden is gonna be the harvester spider, or some people call them the daddy long legs. I always grew up calling them daddy long legs. They come in all different sizes. And they're harmless, y'all. They just like to eat the bad bugs in your garden like aphids, and they don't bite. They're more closely related to a scorpion than they are a spider. And I've been seeing so many in my garden. I remember two years ago, I wished there was a way I could just get a bunch of them and order them online and release them into my garden like you can with ladybugs, but I've never been able to find somewhere like that. But since I've stopped spraying anything, they have been coming into the garden and I've been seeing so many of them all over. One of the guys that is beneficial is the assassin bug. Now these guys are pretty cool looking too. The ones that I have in my garden, I've got some blue ones and then some red ones. These guys are small but they pack a punch in their stinging ability. They can take out bugs that are quite a bit larger than them. And this is the type of bug that is beneficial, but you don't want to pick it up because they can sting you. And from what I have heard, they are quite painful. So just let these guys be. It's not like they're going to jump on you and try to attack you or anything. They're just looking for bugs in your garden. So just let them be if you see them. And I've been seeing quite a bit of them. Now, when they're in egg form, they're a very interesting shape. They're kind of this cone shape, and then they have this little creamy donut at the top. <laughs> That's how I would describe it. So very unique, easy to spot. This tomato is gone insane. Look at this. Now when they're in their nymph form, when they first hatch, they look very much like a miniature assassin bug to me. One of the bad bugs that can really do some severe damage, but do it quietly and secretly without you knowing, is the pickle worm. About two years ago, the pickle worm destroyed our pumpkin crop, but we didn't even know it until it was too late. Now the pickle worm cannot overwinter in cold areas. They come from Florida and some parts of southern Texas, and they slowly migrate up north. I'm in North Georgia, and I started noticing them last year at around, I would say, August. How the pickle worm will damage your crop is they go inside of your squash. They'll leave a little tiny hole and you'll see some of this crystallized, I dribble. You'll see a bunch of crystallized yellowish colored gunk coming out. And that's called frass or their droppings. And they eat your squash from the inside out, eventually turning the insides to goo and it's very disgusting. <laughs> now how to, Trigo keeps bumping my camera. Hi, he just wants some scratches. How I spot the pickle worm before it starts doing damage. The moths will generally lay their eggs on the flower of the plant or any other plant part that is actively growing. And you will notice that the flower will have a little hole in it. And again, you'll often see some of that frass coming out. At this point, I will just remove the whole flower itself and throw it to the chickens. I have not personally found out what their eggs look like yet, and I haven't been able to find any pictures. I do know that they lay them in a cluster, but I will be keeping my eye out this year, and hopefully I can spot them before they even hatch. I see this one starting to already make some Long Island cheese pumpkins. I will post a short video when I see my first pickle worms to warn all my East Coast friends to keep a lookout. And if you're south of me, you better get out to your garden quick because they're out. One of the little dudes that has wrecked havoc on my garden many years in a row 
has been the army worm. And there's all different kinds of army worms. The ones I have in my garden, I think they're called southern army worms. And I'm still trying to figure out the exact egg of these ones. And the ones that I have in my garden, I'm pretty sure their eggs are gray. And some lay them in clusters and others lay them one at a time on a leaf. Now, I'm not 100% sure on that. I collected two of the ones that were just single on a leaf and I put them in a jar and I'm gonna see what hatches out of them. This is one of the ways that I've been able to identify certain bugs in my garden, whether they're good or bad. Now, interesting thing is that I collected a cluster of the gray ones that I found quite a few on my plants and that I've found quite a few on my tomato plants especially. And I have found a few on my garlic. Now when that cluster of eggs finally hatched, I was very surprised at what I saw. Little tiny wasps came out and I thought, this is weird. <laughs> this is not what I was expecting. And I learned that there is a parasitic wasp that will lay their eggs on another bug's eggs. Those little parasitic wasps will grow and they will eat whatever is in that egg and hatch out of it. That was quite educational. I thought that was very fascinating. And if you ever see your horned worm in your garden that has little white eggs on it, that's a parasitic wasp. They will lay their eggs on a horned worm like that and those little larvae will eat the horn worm. It's kind of creepy. Yeah, they eat it while it's still alive. The bug world is a creepy place. <laughs> I'm gonna have to collect another cluster of that particular egg and let it hatch and see what it is. But I'm pretty sure that they're army worms, but I could be wrong. But those army worms can overrun your garden quickly. Last year, there was a few days that I didn't come out here and I had a whole section of my garden. There were, there were so many of them that my husband and I were just overwhelmed. We ended up deciding to get out the hose and we were able to hose them all off that way. In fact, that's one of my older videos from last year. I think that one's called the battle with the army worms or something like that. But this year I've been able to stay on top of it by just removing the eggs and the worms themselves when they hatch. When I look for army worms, I'm looking for their eggs. I'm always overturning the leaves when I see damage. And a lot of times I've come out here and I've seen evidence that there's been some sort of worm, whether it's a horned worm and an, or an army worm. I will look all over, but there's no caterpillar. But I'll often find some bird droppings next to it. I really think the little birds in my garden have been helping me quite a bit this year. Another pest that you'll see in your garden is called the leaf-footed bug. Whew. I think I'm going to run and get my hat real quick, y'all. I'm going to be right back. I ran to get my hat and the sun went away. It's one of those days where it's teasing that it's going to rain, but it, then it doesn't. <laughs> so the sun keeps coming and going. We honestly could use some rain. The last pest that I want to talk about is the leaf-footed bug. And these ones, I don't know what it is. They freak me out. And I have a hard time squishing them. I, they, as far as I know, they don't bite, but they still scare me. Their eggs are pretty easy to identify. They look a lot different than the other types of eggs that you'll see in your garden. They lay them in a line. They have kind of a rusty color to them. I found my first set a few weeks ago and I wasn't quite sure what it was. And I thought it was interesting how they are all connected in a line. Now they're nymphs. A lot of people get them confused with the nymphs of the assassin bug, and which is understandable. They do look very similar. The nymphs of the assassin bug are the ones that I have in my garden. The front end of their body is black, and the nymphs of the leaf-footed bug are red all over on top. That's how I tell. The assassin bug also has more of a predator-shaped mouth. They're quite fascinating little bugs, though. The first time I saw them, they, I thought it was some sort of miniature praying mantis. I was just spotted something, y'all. There is a horned worm egg right here. You see it? I can't stress enough how important it is to get out and really learn your garden. You might not have the same pests and bugs in your garden like I do. So it's good to get out there and try to identify the ones that you do have and learn their whole life cycle. 
For me, that has been the best pest management so far that I have found. That and not spraying anything and allowing the good guys to come around and help me. The last little good guy I'm going to talk about are lace wings. And these little guys love to eat little bugs. They're another one of the ones that loves aphids. Their eggs are quite unique. They hang down and they look like little hairs. They're quite fascinating, really. I haven't personally seen the eggs in my garden yet. I've seen the lace wings. And I would love to be able to see some in person because they're quite interesting. These tomatoes are growing. This is fun. All right, y'all. That is all that I have to share with y'all today. I'm still learning, and as I do, I wanna share it with you to hopefully help you out as well. Because the best pest management I have found is educating myself and learning about the different bugs and pests that I have in my garden so that I know what to look for. And I can stay on top of it, and so I'm not getting overrun. And we'll see how that keeps working for me this year. So far, it's been going well. But I just gotta keep coming out here every day. Are you ready to go inside and cool off? <sighs> All right, y'all, take care. And we'll see you next time. Thank you.